18.27. The bill shortly entitled the Protection of Employment Amendment Bill 2013 has been read a third time and passed. Motions. Mr. Speaker, under this item of the order paper, I rise to put into the records of this House a critically and most historical, historically important resolution. And it reads, Resolution of the National Assembly of St. Christopher and Nevis to commemorate the occasion of the 100th anniversary of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell's birthday, or birth, I should say. Mr. Speaker, several times today there has been mention of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell. Tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, will mark the 100th anniversary of his birth. We are grateful to Almighty God for his birth. We are grateful to Almighty God for preserving him from his birth in the beautiful Isle of Dominica. We are grateful to Almighty God to have nurtured him to the point where he traveled eventually as a young man to St. Kitts and Nevis. And here, put down his bucket and worked. Work, Mr. Speaker, to improve the lot of the ordinary man and not so ordinary man in St. Kitts and Nevis and beyond. Today, because this parliament is meeting, we thought we would use this occasion, most fitting, to bring to the attention of the world the gratitude and the resolve of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis to continue to hold this man high in our esteem and in the esteem of those who knew him and worked with him and served with him around the world. May I, Mr. Speaker, for the records, read the exact words of the resolution. Whereas the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis recognizes Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell as an exemplary statesman and national hero. And whereas Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell was born in Dominica on the 18th day of July, 1913, and worked his way up through the ranks of the laboring masses in St. Christopher and Nevis by being first employed in the sugar industry in 1944 and eventually being recruited into the St. Kitts Nevis Trades and Labor Union in 1946, where he worked as an organizer for the next 10 years, rising in 1947 to the position of vice president, a position he maintained until his death. 57. And whereas Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell served with distinction as a parliamentarian when he was elected to the legislature in 1952 and subsequently elected to the Executive Council in 1955. And whereas upon the introduction of the ministerial system, Sir C.A. Paul Southwell became the Minister of Communications and Works eventually being appointed as the first chief minister of the great trinity of islands, St. Christopher Nevis and Anguilla, where he served until 1966, and then as deputy premier under the late premier, Robert, Sir Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw, in 1967. And we are asked, Sir Caleb was catapulated, catapulated, catapulted, sorry, how could I make such an error?
And whereas Sir Caleb was catapulted into the position of premier following the demise of the late Sir Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw in 1978, but himself succumbed on the 18th day of May, 1979. And whereas Sir Caleb was involved critically in the area of tourism and land development, becoming the chairman of the Caribbean Tourism Association and chairman of the West Indies Associated States. And whereas Sir Caleb was ded dedicated to the cause of CARICOM, having had the foresight to recognize that such a regional body had a vital role to play in negotiating as one voice for the entire Caribbean region. Now be it resolved, therefore, by the, Nas by the National Assembly of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis as follows. That since tomorrow, July the 18th, 2013, marks the 100th anniversary of the birth of the late Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell, that he be publicly recognized in this honorable house for his outstanding contributions to St. Christopher Nevis and to the wider region, that he be loaded for his accomplishments as statesman, as a brilliant economist and social architect, for his contributions to tourism and land development in the Federation, having masterminded the concept of the development of the Frigate Bay Lands in 1979, 71. That the National Assembly acknowledges that the life of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell has been characterized by a legacy of social service, dignity, and a healthy regard for democracy and the rule of law. That the support of the National Assembly be wholeheartedly given to the recognition of the role of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell in the development of the Federation and the Caribbean region as a whole. May it please you, Mr. Speaker. Question is that the resolution. Your permission. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I, I rise to <laughs> say a few words in support of the resolution. Mr. Speaker, um, it's always good to give honor where honor is due. And Caleb, Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell, is one of those persons who we have honored and who we are happy to associate with as tomorrow we will commemorate the occasion of the 100th anniversary of his birth. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Southwell symbolizes a number of things for us. One, of course, is the inclusion and his dedication to regional integration. If you just look at Southwell himself, was born in Dominica, died in St. Lucia, married in the Vision, and lived in St. Kitts. He, so all that alone spells out what we're talking about in terms of inclusion. And we, as a party, the St. Kitts Davis Labour Party, which belongs in the union, embraced him regardless of his place of birth until he held the top leadership position in the country on more than one occasion during his lifetime. Mr. Southwell was also a cultural icon. Yes. I notice nothing was said about that in the resolution. Yes. But I want to say that Mr. Southwell, he introduced our very first arts festival well, in 1964. And <laughs> As a Minister of Culture, it's important that we point these things out for those young ones who won't know about this. He introduced our arts festival in 1964 and gave the opportunity to the exponents of our art form to use their creativity and imagination and to have it there on display. Perhaps, Mr. Speaker, it's time for us to look at that arts festival again 
and see whether or not we should not reintroduce it either on an annual or biennial basis to allow our own young and upcoming artists and promoters to give them a chance to have exposed all their talents, their creativity, and their imagination. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, this year, to commemorate our 30th anniversary of independence, we are having an arts festival, and Southwell is based on what Southwell did so very long ago, that this arts festival is being held this year to commemorate the 30th anniversary of independence. And tomorrow, we expect to launch the logo and the theme at one of the functions that are being held to commemorate the 100th anniversary of Mr. Southwell's birth. Mr. Speaker, he was a very strong union member, so poor worker, coming from a working class organization. And you know today how much emphasis we've put on workers. And so it's very important that today we talk so much about workers in the whole context of the commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the birth of Sir Caleb Paul Azareza South, Azariah Southwell, who himself was the vice president of the St. Louis Navy Trades and Labor Union until his death, which an uh, organization that always looks out for the rights of workers and for the best interests of workers. Mr. Southwell was also someone who exudes and exhibits strong leadership. He not only held the um, positions of premier and chief minister and deputy premier, but he led in many other areas, for example, in tourism. He was a leader there, a visionary. And I think what is Frigate Bay today may not have been what it is were it not for Southwell's visionary leadership back then as he tried to develop Frigate Bay as an investment area. And back then, many persons criticized him for it. But today, we see the fruits of the imagination and creativity that he had. And the foresight of what Frigate Bay is today is in large measure. In large measure, Southwell was is or was responsible for it. He was a family man, as you can see from the members of his family who are here to commemorate this um, anniversary. Very strong on families, and you know, we know about stronger families, how they build stronger communities, and also stronger nations. He, his family meant everything to him. He spent quality time with them to be able to help them to develop into um, responsible adults and responsible citizens. Education also meant a lot to him. And he was not only concerned about the education of his own children, but the education of all who came in contact with him and all who was within his sphere of influence. Because he, coming from a working class background, would know that sometimes that's all we have. So we have to encourage our children to go to school, to stay in school, to learn. And Southwell did just that, knowing that that was the key to take many of us out of poverty and out of the lives we led and the situation in which we grew up. And so he was very, very strong on education. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would just like to commend all those persons, including the Honorable Senator, who is Richard Skerritt, who are responsible for the various activities that are being held in commemoration of this 100th anniversary of the birth of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell, and would like to identify myself and my family with this commemoration. May it please you, Mr. Speaker. I, <clears throat> I want to take this opportunity to add my support to this resolution. Mr. Speaker, Tomorrow, Sir Caleb would have been 100 years old. And in exactly, well, two months from the day after that, this 
Federation will be 30 years old. Federation came into being, Mr. Speaker, only four years after Sir Caleb passed in 1979. The paradox, Mr. Speaker, is that the Constitution, which was crafted three to four years after his death, would have prohibited him from being a member of Parliament today. Yeah. Isn't that sad, Mr. Speaker? Very, very sad. That a man who, many, many years after his death, was made a national hero, and some years later, about 15 years later, we're remembering him again on what would have been his 100th birthday with a number of activities. That that man would not today be able to sit in this honorable parliament. Those who crafted that <laughs> constitution leading up to the 1983 independence should be embarrassed, should be ashamed. And I urge those who get together in the future to amend our Constitution, that we be cognizant of the impact that we can have for generations to come. And it says, Mr. Speaker, that one should not craft these powerful documents based on the, conven on the convenience of what exists today. Sir Caleb was a visionary himself, and he lived for today and for the future. And I urge those who carry responsibilities to always remember that decisions have consequences. Mr. Speaker, it has been a great privilege for me to sit in a position that has impact on the commercial and economic livelihood of this country. And I have had good reason to reflect on the work of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell over the years, but especially as we were preparing for the commemoration. As we speak right now, several members of his family, immediate family, have come home from around the world to celebrate. This is something of a family reunion, Mr. Speaker, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome home the family who do not live here. And right now as we speak, I believe they may be just wrapping up a little uh, ceremony at his gravesite at the uh, cemetery where they are rededicating a, a tombstone, Mr. Speaker. I would have been there myself if this had not continued. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, Mr. Speaker, there's a church service at the Methodist Church, and I invite all who are listening at this point to join us there. And then at midday, there's a, a luncheon taking place at Carambola, and I believe tickets are still available. And on Saturday, Mr. Speaker, we're hosting a, a golf tournament in his memory because it was Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell who helped to bring about the Royal Sengis Golf Course and the Royal Sengis Golf Club, and in effect uh, became the founder of the Royal Sengis Golf Club. So, Mr. Speaker, as a minister of initially tourism and also now industry, trade, commerce, etc., it is indeed a pleasure for me and an honor to have been involved in the publication of a small booklet, which is also being circulated right now. Uh, we haven't raised enough money to print a lot of them, but maybe that will change. And the booklet uh, features um, basically two Two speeches that I made, Mr. Speaker. One I made in 2004 on the occasion of his the 25th 
anniversary of his passing at the annual requiem mass put on by the Senkis Nevis Labour Party. I, Mr. Speaker, had the opportunity to prepare a, le- a, a speech on that occasion, and, and we looked at it, and at the time, Mr. Speaker, I was able to do a fair amount of research. I, had, I was on a little bit of a break in between my sojourns abroad with the West Indies team, and before I got uh, very busy with the Cricket World Cup, and I took about two weeks of very serious research and put together probably one of the better writings that I have done. And that book features that, along with a speech that I made recently at the what we call the University Center, where I paid tribute especially to his uh, economic uh, role in developing uh, tourism and Frigate Bay in particular. So those two speeches are there, along with a forward from a message from the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, along with um, a message from the family, and a fair amount of photographs. And that booklet at the moment is already published and to a limited extent and being circulated. I believe there will be a greater publication later and probably put on sale at a reasonable price, but I don't have the, the details. That is now in the hands of, of other members of the family. So, Mr. Speaker, my duty today is to thank the Right Honorable Prime Minister for this resolution and the team from the Attorney General's uh, uh, chambers for draft in this resolution, and I think the family would be most pleased, Mr. Speaker, to uh, know that this was done. They have not seen the actual resolution as a family. I believe that one of the sons had an input into some of the content. But, Mr. Speaker, on behalf, therefore, of the family and friends of Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell, I want to say thank you. I also want to take this opportunity to said to uh, Mr. Stanley Franks and Mr. Earl Clark, thank you on behalf of the family for their uh, input on the live uh, call-in program on Monday night when the program pretty much kicked off for the week. And uh, I look forward to seeing as many uh, of us as possible present at the church service tomorrow. May it please you, Mr. Speaker. The resolution be approved as read. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it.